created an aggressive cure plan to take that trajectory, you're, you're not getting it, to move it up to, you know, what would it take for them to be back on the, on the trajectory? And we rank order them. And again, we didn't just say, do everything, two weeks from now, you've got to be done. But said, so you need to get with the program. This is your cure plan. I made sure we ran it by the people in the business. And then I, I went to escalate it to, to their line of business owner. At this point, the person who ran that particular business unit said, well, I don't want you to do that. I said, well, I understand this, but I'm gonna, this is to help you. The executive I'm escalating this to is very supportive of security. Next, my boss is the most supportive person. Whenever I've gone to him and said there's a problem, here's what I recommend, he's on it. This is to help you. Well, I don't want you to do that. He used that as an opportunity to go to his boss, this, this, this gentleman I referred to, and meet with him separately. Well, good for him, but why did it take that? Um, and then I took that and I reported management, reported again to our oversight committee. So, so what's, what's the takeaway from this? I looked and said, this is a product that needed to get in alignment. We created a plan for them to do that. I gave this person every opportunity to do it. The real problem here was he didn't think it was important. Now, I will tell you at that meeting, it was reiterated him in words of one syllable by executives that it wasn't, that wasn't acceptable. This was very important. Security is part of our brand. Absolutely critical. So for whatever reason, this person thought that this wasn't important to our business. When one of the highest executives in the company reiterates this is critical to our business, you don't, what's the takeaway? I don't th think that he had to get it because it was now reiterated by your boss's boss's boss. This is it. This is part of our core value as a company. So it's a little, you know, it's, 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 it's good because what I told my team is we did this the right way. It's not just what you do, it's how you do it. My goal here isn't to put somebody on report, and it wasn't. And it wasn't personal. That guy's being mean to me. He's not doing it. It's, this is our business. It's important to us. One team, for whatever reason, can't choose to opt out of something that's a core business value. Not just a value, but, but it would affect all our customers and our brand if this isn't done right. And to get back to this particular customer, I didn't like the fact that it was, it was kind of an unpleasant customer. And it was certainly an unpleasant conversation, but they weren't wrong about the core thing. We expect better from you, and they're right, and they deserve better. And the other thing I did with this is to say, after we had this meeting, I can go back to that customer and say, you know what, you're right. Here's what we've done, and we escalated to the highest level of the company. That doesn't mean we're gonna be perfect overnight. It has been reiterated and you know, he, we, we put a cure plan in place. Because I don't want to have that conversation with them again. And I particularly don't want to have it six months later after they raise their concerns. You don't want to go back to somebody and say, you know, I feel your pain, but we didn't do anything. All right, that's not the conversation to have. So what else did we take away from this? Well, now we have a problem child program. And problem child means when we look at, you know, we review all the things that people are doing and not doing. If we see a team struggling, for whatever reason, we try to give that group much more focused attention earlier. And I've actually asked for resource for this. And why is it? It's, it's kind of a dilemma. You make, you know, we, we, we build new products, we make acquisitions, you want everyone to be green, so to speak, everyone to be on the, on the right trajectory, but you can't always get there overnight anyway. And if you see somebody who's really struggling, I would rather get ahead of that than have that turn into a, an unpleasant conversation with a customer because we should have been all over that. And there are, you know, a couple of groups that we track as problem children. That means we put a cure plan in place. We try to be very aggressive. We take our hacking team. We hack the product. You know, what can you do to get some, to help somebody, you know, get right? So last, last thing, I want to make sure I don't run over my time here. Um, now we put all the structure in place. What do you do with that? Well, you look, we don't necessarily look for more worlds to conquer, but as it turns out, there is another world to conquer. And one of the things is, for, for some of you who may go to uh, you know, f other conferences where they talk about assurance, the new thing, the new new thing, is supply chain risk. And it's hard to understand sometimes what people mean by that because it sort of means, it's like cloud, it means different things to different people, no matter, depending who you're talking to. But um, one of the main things that people are concerned with is, and understandably, uh, at least the customers, I want to know that if I get a product from you know, my supplier, first of all, I want to make sure that it actually isn't counterfeited or doesn't have counterfeit pieces in it. But the other thing I want to know that people are worried about, I'm worried that somebody someplace, some furner, 
could put something bad in the code base. And the bad in the code base gets into your code, and the next thing you know, there's a kill switch. And I'm not making fun of this, because you know, it, it goes back to, if you build something, you want to know of what it's made, how it's made, have good controls and assurance over it through its life cycle. So I'm not poo-pooing the, the concern at all. And the fact that people may be you know, doing things in multiple locations or pulling code from multiple sources is, is, is like another iterant of an assurance process problem. Now, businesses supply chain risks are something a little different. So what do businesses worry about? Yes, yeah, some of that is what I just illustrated. But some of it has to do with um, intellectual property protection. So for example, if someone downloads a library, depending if it has a viral license and it gets in your code base and you have to give away all your products, not so good. So businesses are worried about some of the same things, but some that are different. But at the end of the day, what you want to be able to do is to tell a story. And the story you want to tell, because a lot of people, particularly the Defense Department, is worried about supply and chain risk, is to sit down and have a conversation like this. I understand what your concerns are. Here are the things we do. Here are the things that we're concerned about in terms of supply chain risk. Here's the following 12, 15, 30, whatever it is. Here are the things, controls, the processes, the controls, policies we have in place to address those things. Sometimes. And we've actually done a gap analysis. What were we worried about? What is it that you need to do to, to meet that particular threat? We've looked at where we weren't doing something, and we also institute this across our lines of business. So we make sure that regardless of you know, what product we're putting together, hardware, software, we have consistent uh, ways of mitigating against these pertaling threats. That's the story you want to be able to tell. It's not just assurance, but it sounds a lot like this program I was just illustrating to you. And the other reason you want to be able to tell a story is you have people in Washington trying to, everybody, this is the new thing. If you want a new gravy train, it's supply chain risk. Everybody's got a conference, everybody's proposing standard. There are all kinds of people who want to work on how can I come up with a structure for this. So if you want to talk to legislators about here's what's reasonable and feasible, here's what would actually work, here's the, the fact that businesses have slightly different concerns than customers. You need to be able to tell a story. And part of the, re the way you tell a story is by talking about what your own institution does. Here's what my company does. Here's what's reasonable and feasible and achievable. So this is a leverage opportunity for us because there's enough overlap here between assurance and supply chain that the existing compliance model we put in place is something we can now adapt. So I didn't set up a program like this. And I can't even say I did. The people who work for me did 98% of what I've just talked about. But we can take what we've done that's been successful and use it for another purpose, which means we're justifying our existence. So what is the, you know, what is the conclusion? Um, part of the reason, I, I didn't just wake up and say, you know, j working on you know, less buggy software isn't cool enough anymore. I have to say governance. I want governance in my title. But the reason we did this is because the company, when I, when I first joined Oracle, is it 22 years? I was eight at the time. Um, <laughs> I'm sticking with that. We keep growing. And it, you know, it's, it's a combination of the world has changed. The world has changed for us because of the way that we grow. It's far more regulated. Um, if any, you know, part of my collateral duties have been reviewing a seemingly endless procession of proposed bills on cybersecurity. And it's not that I'm afraid of regulation per se, but you just want whatever is done to be you know, achievable, reasonable, and focused. But it is more regulated. Much more awareness of security. Um, when I started in this, you know, there, were, there was no, people didn't even call it assurance unless you worked on, the, on security evaluations. There weren't conferences. Almost everybody's aware of this. And every time you open the paper, there's another, was it the New York Times had, uh, and, and the Washington Post had articles, major articles about cybersecurity virtually every week. Um, more interdependencies because everybody runs on a cyber backbone now. And frankly, there is a much more compelling argument for governance because you want to make sure that you're doing things consistently. And by the way, if we get to a model of transparency or, or things actually do get regulated, you need that kind of structure to be able to support it. I need to be able to say to one person, OK, great, here's a single source of truth about what we do and don't do. Um, it lower, uh, it's lower cost for the company. People say, well, how do you justify this? I said, it's all cost avoidance. It, you know, it is all cost avoidance. It's cost avoidance to us uh, because of thousands of products. We run on, you know, Oracle database runs on 19 operating systems, and there's probably six versions in support. How expensive do you think it is to fix a single defect? Really bloody expensive. Patching costs. Um, more and more customers are coming back and saying, 
I want to know what you did and didn't do. I want you to have a third party look at your co 